Well, good afternoon, Basel fans, and welcome here to on Team France for now the 2024 IWBF Revechage. The last chance to get to the Paralympics in Paris does begin today, and our first game indeed is between Italy and Morocco. Well, again, welcome to all the IWBF and wheelchair basketball fans all across the globe. This is going to be a very exciting matchup between one of the best teams in Europe against the defending champions of the African Para Games in 2023 of Morocco. Well, hello, everybody. And again, as we mentioned, bienvenue, welcome, bonjour, ça va. We're in beautiful Antibes, France, on the south coast of this beautiful, magnificent country. And we're live at the Azur Arena. Well, if you are fresh and new to IWBF wheelchair basketball, this game is the beginning, the first tournament of its kind, the Repercharge, as teams will be joining those who have already qualified for the Paris 2024 Paralympics. Well, now you can see the Italian national teams of key players such as Sabri Bedzetti, who was originally born in North Macedonia and one of the main offensive threats. Now, here comes the Moroccan national team. Well, they are led by their captain, Zouer Shalat. Remember, this team are the champions of the African Power Championship that did take place in 2023. So they did defeat Algeria in a very exciting final. But at the moment, we are indeed going to pay respect, pay our homage, give accolades as we stand momentarily for the national anthems of both Morocco and Italy. So during this time, we do ask kindly, if you are able to do so, to stand and pay our homage. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, it's time for the national anthem. For all of us who can stand up, the national anthem of Italy. Pour celles et ceux qui peuvent se lever, l'hymne national de l'Italie. Anthems of both Italy and Morocco have been sung, and now the players will shake hands. 
course, this is the respect, admiration, and love for the game of wheelchair basketball. And as we said, we are now only three minutes away from tip-off for what is going to be a very exciting match. And remember, the Italians featuring very well at the IWBF World Championship in Dubai, led by Sabri Benzetti. And if you think about some of the other players in this team, the likes of Giulio Papi, who does currently play in Bilbao, and Andrea Giaretti. I'll take nothing away from head coach Carlo De Giusto's team. They would have felt at the European Power Championships that they could have had a chance to have automatically qualified for the Paris 2024 Paralympics. But now they have another chance here, the repechage, the first tournament of its kind here in wheelchair basketball, in which many teams will have a last chance to qualify for Paris. Well, of course, Dimitri Tange was another key player, along with Filippo Carasino. You will probably see those two players come in and out of the lineup tonight here for the Italians. Of course, this is a team that's built on a lot of defensive transition plays, making sure that the primary game plan does start for the defense. Well, Morocco, as we mentioned, defending champions of the African Power Championship, defeating Tunisia in the final, led by Captain Zoué Shalat and head coach Uches Rafael. This is a chance for them to prove to the world and to show that Morocco is going to be a force to be reckoned with in wheelchair hoops. Well, of course, some of the other key players, you got the likes of Fuad El Musati, not to mention number 10, Murad El Amadi. Well, it's about coming here, playing collectively, but more importantly, representing your country in fine fashion. We're live at the Azure Arena here in the beautiful city of Antibes, France. Well, this time we'd like to give a big shout out, of course, to the organizers of this tournament, the IWBF, and of course, Handy Sports. And a big shout out to the institutional partners coming from France who've done a fantastic job, fantastic job, that is, but also the official partners of this tournament. We have the likes of Tissot, Moulton, RGK as well. Many fantastic companies that have done a great job. And for the better of wheelchair hoops, the progression of this game. Well, many would argue that the Italians, it's a very talented squad, but the depth that they have in their team, it's fair to say that probably doesn't compare to what you would get with the Germans, the Dutch, and of course the two teams who've already qualified for the Paralympics, that being Spain and Great Britain, but a very talented team and a great test for head coach Uches Rafael in Morocco. They've got to come and play with no fear tonight. But when you play against the Italians, whichever team you are, transition defense will be the key pedigree. Well, to all of our wheelchair muscle fans watching across the globe, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Bienvenue, welcome to the Azure Arena. This is the 2024 Rapid Charge Wheelchair Basketball Tournament. And as the slogan says, last chance for Paris. Well, the Italians will be going with a starting lineup of Giulio Papi along with their key player, Sabri Benzetti. Captain Filippo Carasino along with Ahmed Raurahi and Joel Boganelli. Well, for Morocco, they're starting five. We're going to see Captain Zoué Shalat along with Mokhtar El Hazoui and Bilal Haman Lashab, Rida Matoui and Aissa Falemp. Well, the Italians did have the debut game at the IWBF World Championship. They took on the UAE and just showed their dominance here in the world of wheelchair basketball. And then we'll have the opening game here of the Rapid Charge 2024 live here in Antibes. Oh, we're just having a few technical difficulties that we are trying to sort out with the shot clock, so we will have this momentarily fixed and we will get this game underway. Falamp will be jumping this one, of course, with Badzetti from the Santa Court. Well, again, we already have four countries who have qualified automatically for the Paralympics. We had the European Power Championships that were held in Rotterdam during August, in which Great Britain and Spain made the final and automatically qualified. But now, Basel fans, I think we are ready to get this one back underway. It's Benzetti 
Tipping this one off with Falem, but we get now Morocco with the first possession. Well, getting organized into a good offense is going to be the key here for the Moroccans. Creating high percentage looks from the field. Shalad looking for Falam. Heavy defense coming from Benzetti at Boganelli. Falam's going to put up a tough one. Back iron can't get it. Papi with a rebound. The Italians doing what they try to do best all the time, and usually they're very effective. Pushing the ball very quickly in transition. Well, Falam getting inside the key, and again, it's a good look, but he's got to be able to finish those ones. Sabri Benzetti trying to lead the transition for the Azuri. He's fouled in transition. Well, the foul is going to be committed by Morocco's number 13, Rida Maatui. So it will be a sideline possession to the Italians. Well, as we mentioned, in the European Para Championships, it was Spain and Great Britain who automatically qualified for the Paralympics. The Italians just, of course, taking up the final victory against Turkey, which more or less had enabled them to be represented at this tournament. On well, the Moroccans, defending champions of the African Power Championship. So got one of the best in Europe versus one of the best, so this is good execution. And already the Italians getting off the mark. Well, Ahmad Raurahi getting the assist coming from Karasino. Morocco still looking for their first field goal. The Italians' defense proving to be too imperious at the moment. Trying to find something. Nowhere to go here now. Good passing. Another wide open look. And that's a good offense. That's got to be the key for Morocco. Creating high percentage looks from the field. But now defensively, they're going to have their work cut out. Well, this goes downtown from three. That just goes off to the right. The Italians not renowned for taking a lot of triples in their games. We saw at the IWBF World Championship and the European Power Championship. They like to play with inside the rainbow as Morocco getting their first two points of the 2024 repechage. Well, that was nailed by Captain Zouer Shalat. Well, Morocco showing quite a bit of aggression on defense, and that's how you need to play against one of the very best teams in Europe. But one thing Morocco can't afford is to get into too much foul trouble early on. Papi going baseline, finds Bedzetti inside the paint, back iron. Now, one thing you should know about this arena, it is also the home for able-bodied basketball team in the Pro B, the second division of France, on team. And these rims, well, they are not particularly friendly, so you must find the right rhythm. Shalat made his first one, goes for another one. That's just a little too short. Goes out of bounds, and that's going to be possession back to the Azuri. Well, the Italian's nickname is indeed the Azuri. Well, the infamous saying in Italian is in bocco al lupo, in the mouth of the wolf, which many of these players would definitely have heard from Carlo De Giusto pregame. Well, left too much time and space, wide open, no problem. Well, there's one player, Filippo Carasino. Well, he's the kind of player, of course, if you give him too much time and space, he will punish you. Consistency is his key. Now Morocco have five seconds to get the ball over the half court. Well, they're going to have to push this one quickly. Falam's trying to work as hard as does. Phenomenal job now. Just avoiding the eight seconds. Good hands by the Italians. Goes out of bounds. I think that's going to remain Morocco ball on the sideline with nine seconds on the shot clock. And you tell you what, when you have five seconds to get the ball over the halfway line and you're defended by a very determined Italian national team, that takes something. Now, the officials have decided it's going to be reset to 14 because although the Italians didn't have full possession, they did end up turning it over. So enough time here for the Moroccans. Time winding down on the shot clock, trying to go inside the paint, but good defense by Benzetti, making life very difficult. But now they got numbers. Tough pass in transition. It's another turnover. Now they had a four on one, but didn't get their space here right. But it's another Morocco turnover. Can the Italians convert this into transition points? 
Nice give and go, finding Ben Zeti, but too strong. And again, it's the same thing I said. Those rims, they are unforgiving in this on Team Arena. Matsui inside the paint, gets his pocket picked. Of course, the Moroccans are unable to come up with a loose ball. Shalat just fumbles it out of bounds. So far, the Italians leading 4-2 with 6.17 to go in the first quarter. And we indeed have a timeout. Well, of course, basketball fans, if you are watching live, this is the IWBF Repa Charge, the first qualification tournament of its kind for the Paris 2024 Paralympics. And if you are watching, please make sure you like this live YouTube stream, subscribe to the IWBF on YouTube, and follow us on X, Instagram, and all other social media platforms. Well, timeout's been called by Italian head coach Carlo De Giusto, and I think the message you'll have for his players at the moment is we need to settle down the tempo. Well, he's got a very experienced team, as we mentioned, with Giulio Papi, Carasino, and not to mention the likes of Sabri Bezzetti, but every great team gets challenged, especially here at the international level. The Italians having some players obviously playing for clubs, such as Bill Bow, not to mention Albacete, but you know, there's always a challenge, as I mentioned. Morocco are very hungry to come here and show the world that they want to get to the 2024 Paralympics. And of course, you must give respect where it's due, winning the African Para Championships. Obviously, a very competitive competition. over six minutes left here in the first quarter. The Italians le leading by a slender two points. Well, again, they're giving a lot of time and space here. Morocco forcing Italy to take perimeter shots, and at the moment, they're not knocking them down. Shellac corner, it's going to be a turnover. Good defense by Sabri Benzetti. Well, defense is usually what predicates the Italian success, as we did see in Dubai at the IWBF World Championship. But can they find a rhythm offensively? Morganelli setting the ball screen. Carasino nowhere to go on the baseline. Poppy give and go, finding Benzetti inside the key, and again, it's too strong off the backboard. Morocco trying to hang in there, making life a little bit frustrating for the Italians. Basically becoming an issue for Morocco. Time winding down. Finding Shalat inside the key, and he ties the game up at four apiece. Well, Morocco coming here with a lot of spirit, a lot of heart. Can the Italians match that aggression? Carasino thinks about it, goes for it. And again, Italy struggling immensely here from the mid-range. They come up with an offensive rebound. Nice give and go inside the key. And again, B E A. Beautiful Italian offense. Well, patience needs to be the key for the Italians. The shots aren't dropping from inside the rainbow or from the three point line. But getting inside the key is something they're very effective at. Falap trying to penetrate. Now we're under 10 on the shot clock. Trying to go for the tough one. Matui inside the paints. Now the Italians looking for a counterattack. Here comes Carasino. Well, has options, finds Papi. Papi inside the key and again off the backboard. The Italians, of course, taking a two possession lead at the moment. Well, this is the thing about Italy. Whenever they come up with a rebound, a defensive stop, it's just how quickly they're able to get out in transition. And spacing is probably something they need to develop in the half-court offense. Oh, 
Well, you can hear the drums, the passion from the Italian fans who've made the journey here to the beautiful south coast of France, not too far away from the north of Italy. Chalant trying to go baseline, has an opening off the backboard again, gets it to roll in. Well, trying to restore a bit of confidence, a bit of belief for Morocco's offense. And that's not a bad offense. But now, can they get a stop here? Cross court to Giulio Papi, left wide open, goes in, six it. And that's the Papi we know, the Papi we saw in Dubai, the Papi that we saw in Rotterdam. Well, the Moroccans at the moment paying way too much respect to the Italians, giving them way too many open looks, and Benzetti. Well, the aggression just said, no in mio casa, not in my house. Good hands by Sabri Benzetti. Remember, he was born in North Macedonia. But having said that about Sabri Benzetti, I mean, he's one of the best wheelchair basketball players in the world. Chalet trying to go pick and roll. Italian's being aggressive on defense. Poppy gets a rebound. And here comes the counterattack. Just over three minutes left here in the first quarter. Garasino again finding Sabri Benzetti. Goes in. Count it. Sabri Benzetti getting the at one. He will go to the free throw line for the potential three point play. Well, this is the patience we talked about in the Italian offense. The thing we now we're seeing, of course, if they get a quick option in the fast break, they'll go for it. If they don't, they'll obviously bring the ball out and try and get better spacing into a much more effective half-court set. Benzetti just getting the roll on the free throw. Biggest lead of the game now for the Italians. Morocco at the moment having to work for everything. Falap again, the pass gets intercepted. Well, it's just maybe a little bit too stagnant on offense. The Moroccans just need a little bit more movement. Carasino left time and space. He's going to take this one from 18. Just unable to convert. Moroccans looking for a counterattack, but nobody coming forward here with Shalat. Well, they're trying to go inside the Valad, but again, the Italians' defense condensing everything, making life difficult. Well, Boganelli's wide open, but they don't get the ball to him. Carasino looking for options, finding Giulio Papi. Solid passing. Carasino from the free throw line puts this one up, and again, it's all Italia right now. They are cooking. They feel the confidence. They feel the momentum. Well, Morocco have now gone just almost two minutes without a field goal. It's a little bit too congested, but now they get a pass inside the paint. It's a good look. Falamp offensive rebound. He'll try to put back. Gets his own rebound. Second time, no good. Third time, maybe a charm. Yes, sir. Well, the Italians know that he's becoming the go-to option inside the paint for Morocco. And when you have one player who becomes a focal point defensively, it does become a little bit easier for the Italians. Carasino finding Ben Zeddy. It's way too easy. Well, Morocco needs to make life a little bit more tight inside the paint here for Italy because they are just getting everything and anything they want from the field. And that could potentially be a two for one for the Italians. Good hands by Benzetti. Here comes the Italian counterattack. Benzetti's got Joel Boganelli. Finds Carasino. And now indeed it's an 11 point lead to the Italians. 30 seconds left here in the th first quarter. Oh, another turnover. 
Well, if the Italians take the time, they can get the final possession of the first quarter, but indeed there will be two seconds difference between game and shot clock at the moment. Well, again, we'd like to say hello and welcome to all of our fans currently watching live on the IWBF YouTube. This is the 2024 Rapid Charge, the final chance to get to the 2024 Paris Paralympics. And if you are watching this live stream, please let us know where you are watching, what your name is, so we can give you a shout out of which team are you supporting? Are you supporting the Italians or are you supporting the mighty Morocco? Morocco, the defending champions of the African Power Championship, defeating Algeria in the final. Shot clock has been turned off, so the Italians can have the final possession. Carasino finding an opening. Giulio Papi is going to take this one. Doesn't get the roll. And now Morocco, four seconds left. A bit of time here. Good defense, but a foul is going to be committed by Sabri Bedzetti. That's only the first team foul for the Italians here in the first quarter. One point four left. They get it down. He's going to have to shoot it. Doesn't get it off in time. Well, at the end of the first quarter, it is indeed the Italians who lead this one, 19 to eight. Well, Morocco have shown some promise. The issue for them at the moment, too many costly turnovers when trying to get the ball inside the paint to their main go-to player for Lamp. And they need to find other ways to score from the offense. Carlo De Giusto, the head coach of Italy at the moment. Well, he'll be relatively pleased with his team. They started out a little bit rough, but now they found a rhythm. They found their identity and they're beginning to assert themselves in this game. Well, here are some of the key highlights from the first quarter. Indeed, it was at times the Italian defense was a little bit scrambled. Morocco were getting some wide open looks, and here's a nice little penetration by Zouid. Shalat, the captain of Morocco. But one thing Sabri Benzetti and his teammates, they figured out, here's a replay of Giulio Papi, was they figured Morocco only want to score inside the key. Let's condense the defense. Well, defensively, Morocco has to figure out a solution to prevent Sabri Benzetti from getting wide open looks inside the key. Head coach of Morocco, Uches Rafael, at the moment, trying to rally his players together. Well, so far, Morocco shooting four for 14 from the field. Haven't got to the free throw line so far. The Italians have had two free throws. They've been unable to convert those free throws. Well, another issue here for the Moroccans taking care of the basketball. And if you ask me, eight turnovers already for Morocco. That's one too many. Italians have only turned the ball over three times so far in the first quarter. But they have the double digit lead of 11 points. Italy getting the first possession of the second quarter. Karasina left wide open, thinks about it. This time he takes it, puts it up, and now indeed a 13-point lead to the Azzurri. Well, there's one play you cannot leave wide open. Karasino, as we did see at the IWBF World Championship, he has the confidence when he gets going. Filippo Karasino. Well, he led the Italians with 16.3 points per game at the European Power Championships. Ninth turnover here of the game for Morocco. But credit to the Moroccans, they make every effort for the transition defense to try and recover. And that's what I'm talking about now, good defense. Well, that is a phenomenal job by Mohamed Bargo, who's only just checked into the game for the first time today. Good passing here by Morocco. Inside the key, and again, another good look, but just didn't get the quite right angle on the backboard. 
Well, Carasino doesn't know. I think that's come off of Shalat. Well, Shalat made the great defensive play. Poppy, well, Carasino, excuse me, just lost his balance, but I'm almost certain. Captain of Morocco, Zohan Shalat, probably is very lucky that they've retained possession, but they will get it back nonetheless. Another baseline shot left wide open, and why not? If you don't buy a ticket, you'll never win the raffle. That's Mohamed Wallini getting his first field goal of the game and cutting it down to an 11-point ball game. Poppy trying to go off the backboard. As already mentioned here at the Azure Arena, these basketball nets and rims, they are not so friendly. The slightest bit of contact in the basketball can have a bit of an overreaction. Of course, we've been able to see many of the teams practicing here today, yesterday. Ben Zetti, time and space, doesn't get it. Morocco's defense pays off, but can they push something here on offense? Shalat almost turning it over, but Lini comes up with it. Look at the aggressive nature of the Italians' defense. Contesting everything, trying to make the passes difficult. Shalat now gets inside the paint. Morocco could have gone on their first 4-0 run but they're unable to convert inside the key. Well, Carasino going for the fadeaway, off balance, and again, swishes that one. Well, nice play by Filippo Carasino. Extending Italy's lead back to 13 as Carlo Di Giusto watching calmly as his players try to reassert their dominance here in the second quarter. Well, it's a right idea, good pass, but Wallini's unable to receive the pass effectively. Now the Italians looking to counterattack. Carasino finding Giulio De Papi. Morocco trying to close out effectively. Papi left wide open, and again, nicely tucked away. Oh, it's patient passing by the Italians. At times you see them go for quick transition shots, but then you can see them demonstrate the effective ability to create it. Now Shalak goes from downtown. That's the first three-point field goal attempt by the Moroccans. It's Benzetti, almost fumbles it. Great job by Sabri Benzetti, finding Papi, avoiding the eight-second violation. Carasino again. This time finds Benzetti, tries to go for the acrobatic, keeps it alive for the Italians. Well, we have a slight issue with the shot clock. The shot clock's been turned off because it was reset to 24 and not 14, but the Moroccans have come up with it. Shalat's looking for options here. Nobody going with him. Well, this is where Morocco need to improve their fast break. Don't quite have the numbers ahead. Another baseline shot goes up. Rebound secured by Papi, and a foul has been committed. Mohamed Bargo, after missing the 10 foot, of course, then reached in and committed. But it's his first personal foul of the game, and it's the first team foul here in the second quarter. The Italians lead it by 15 points. Well, no surprise to see the Italians led by Filippo Carasino. He has 10 points so far, and as I already mentioned, at the European Para Championships in August in Rotterdam, he was their leading scorer with 16 points per game. Now, double change coming in for the Italians. As number 10, Dimitri Tange, who's probably one of their best glue players. Well, defensively, he get, offers a lot to the Azzurri. And also checking in, Francesco Santorelli. The visiting fans coming from the beautiful land of Italia. Tange Fane Pape fumbles it. And a very uncharacteristic Italian turnover. <laughs> Substitution coming in for the Moroccans, checking into the game. Coming in number 15, Sharaf Aberville. His first introduction tonight here for the Moroccans. <laughs> Well, there's a reason Morocco are champions on the African Power Championship. There's talent in this team, but the experience of playing at such a high level, especially here at the 2024 Repechage Tournament, it's the first kind 
of any qualification system to the Paralympics. Usually teams qualify via the Continental or IWBF World Championship. It's Carlo De Giusto, he will call timeout with 5.41 to go. The Italians lead it by 15 points. Well, big shout out to the Conquerors, wheelchair basketball. Shout out to Dylan Cummings, Henry El Ram Kalimi, Ismail Badui, Salah Federa TV, Georgette Kitenge. And of course, to all of our fans watching live, this is the 2024 IWBF Rapid Charge, the final chance for Paris 2024 Paralympics. Now, again, if you are watching, please let us know where you are watching, which team you're supporting, and what your name is, so we can give you a shout out. And if you can, please as well, make sure you like this live stream and also subscribe to the IWBF on YouTube and all social media platforms of X, Instagram, and Facebook. Well, interesting comment we've had on the live YouTube chat. Tufik Medour said a great difference level between these two teams. But you know what? At the moment, experience is paying off for the Italians. As I mentioned, you have to give credit where credit is due to Morocco. There's a reason why they are champions of the African Power Championship. Right now, it's all about preparing for the future, setting the tone and making sure the sport of wheelchair basketball progresses even further in Morocco. Every great team, every champion has to go through the learning curve. In Morocco, this is a great challenge for them. Shellac go for penetration. It's a wide open look, but he's unable to convert. Italians leading still by 15, just over halfway here in the second quarter. Time winding down. Tange's going to put up a three, and finally, we have a treble in the game. It's coming from Signore Dermici Tange. Oh, these rims, they are very tough to shoot on. As I mentioned, when the basketball makes the slightest bit of contact with the rim, you might see the ball fly into Rosette. Well, the Moroccans are unable to convert anything from the mid-range, but they've got to keep on playing. Papi Fanitange. Santorelli going back to Giulio Papi inside the key. Just a little too strong off the backboard. So Moroccans now trying to counterattack, but they turn it back over again. Benzetti identifying Poppy. Now it's a 20 point lead. Well, it's all about defense with the Azuri. And that's one thing Carlo De Giusto really takes a lot of pride in the teams he's coached, making sure defensively they force their teams into tough pressure situations. But you know, also, once you come up with the steal, the rebound, now you're going to see it here the counterattack for the Italians. Going inside the lane and Papi going off the backboard and El Banco di Italia is open as now Morocco calls timeout to Chess Rafael, his team trailing 32 to 10 here in the second quarter with 3.46 left. Well, I think right now the mental and physical fatigue is settling in, but you know, as mentioned, there is quite a bit of talent in this Moroccan team. Well, head coach of Chess Rafael has a very good point guard. And of course, Zouer Shalat, their captain. And also take the likes of Mohamed Wulini, who came into the game and was able to tuck away a mid-range shot. But it's all a learning curve, growing pains at the moment now for Morocco. They've got to take what they can game by game. And also it's about progressing and preparing for future generation wheelchair basketball players. Well, again, we'd like to give some more shout outs to those watching live on the YouTube stream on IWBF. So, shout out to Ali Ball watching from Warwickshire in the United Kingdom from the Wheelchair Basketball Club family. Hello, Ali. And also to Mark Schlofeld. Correct, yes, BCL, but right now it's all about IWBF.
Well, what can Morocco build from this half-court set? Chess Rafael just calling that timeout. This is where you want to create something because there was no full-court pressure coming from the Italians. The rebound has been secured. Giannetti just checking into the game for the first time here for the Azzurri. Bedzetti looking for options. Finds Joel Boganelli. Good passing, and Boganelli unable to get that one. Well, that was a good angle. Can't reiterate enough. These rims, they are exceptionally hard to get anything going. Well, nice pass by Shalai. He's got to go for the layup. Well, could have gone for the reverse. Caught between two goes up, but a three-second violation is going to be called. But again, I want to go back to the replay because the pass was sublime from Morocco captain Zouer Shalat. A bounce pass between two players. Just under three minutes here in the first half. Dimitri Tange, who is the only player to make a three-point field goal in this game. Giannetti from the mid-range. Well, he's fouled, so he will go to the free throw line. Foul has been committed by Morocco's number seven, Mohamed Juradi. And again, beautiful sight to see Moroccan fans here in the building, along with the Italian fans, waving the flag and showing the pride of their beautiful countries. Andrea Giretti, one of the veteran players here of this Italian national team, makes the first free throw. Again, another one of the main offensive stars back at the 2018 IWBF World Championship in Hamburg. One of his key pedigrees is he is a phenomenal mid-range shooter for the Azzurri, but he's unable to convert the second free throw. Well, nice transition, that's much better by Morocco. And can they build some confidence? Possession by possession needs to be the key now for the Moroccans. It's Mohamed Wulini getting his second field goal of the game. He now moves up to four points. Only two players for Morocco in the stat sheet. Giretti's unable to make the layup. The Italians will regain possession. Well, Dimitri Tange is just insinuate to the referee there's an issue at the moment with one of his wheels so he's going to have to leave the game head coach Carlo De Giusto might need to make a change at the moment well no change needed the technicians coming out to help Andrea Giretti the excuse me Dimitri Tange it's going to be 14 seconds on the shot clock and a baseline ball to the Italians well, a big shout-out to Reina Luft, who is a phenomenal advocate of wheelchair basketball. Had the pleasure of meeting him before. So welcome, Reina. I hope you are enjoying life, of course. Phenomenal, phenomenal event we have here in Antibes. Charetti going for the mid-range. Looked good, but it just rolled its way out. Moroccans with a chance here to go for a 4-0 run. The first time they could have gone for this. Nice passing. Has to finish this one, but again, just doesn't get the right angle. Well, one positive to take for the Moroccans. So here's Shalat. Now, an offensive foul is going to be called against Giretti. Their point guard and captain number four. So here's Shalat. Oh, he's got quite a lot of talent. He's a great facilitator, but you can see at times he may need to be a little bit more of an offensive threat here for the Moroccans. He is their top scorer, six points. Will Lini go for a deep three? This one's up. No good, that goes out of bounds, but that's gonna go back to the Italians. 147 left here in the first half. Tange looking for options, coming off one screen. Well, he's going to go himself. Nobody came out to get him, but it unable to convert. This time he's able to get the drop. Well, these players are going to have to take a day or two to adjust to how these rims work. 
Yeah, this arena is beautiful. This town is immaculate. We're on the southern coast of France in the beautiful city of Antibes. You couldn't have asked for a just a more paradise location, but I guess the only thing right now, and even in able body bass, where you speak with some of the Antibes players, they'll tell you these ribs, you have to adjust to them. They are tough to shoot on. Morocco had the right idea. They tried to go to Wellini inside the paint, but it's another turnover. The Italians will regain possession. 1.13 left. 23-point lead at the moment. Santarelli and Bedzetti doing a phenomenal job of breaking down the Moroccan full-court pressure. Santarelli pump fakes. Goes inside the key and no problem for Francesco Santarelli. That was a simple pump fake that he was able to just find and manipulate a little bit of space there between him and the defense. And it's that kind of patience. You have to appreciate how the Azuri play. We saw it at the IWBF World Championship. And we saw it at the European Power Championships. Shalat just hitting the front iron. Now the Italians trying to find Ben Zetti in transition. Morocco doing a good job of recovering, but it's not enough as Ben Zetti getting the at one. Well, it's all about the transition, but you're talking about one of the greatest wheelchair basketball players in the world, Sabri Ben Zetti. Well, he almost averaged a double-double at the European Power Championships. He was two rebounds short of that double-double with 15.6 points per game. And he indeed is aiming for his first ever Paralympic appearance. Bedzetti unable to convert the three-point play. Shot clock has been turned off. Willini has a wide open layup coming. He's got to convert this. Doesn't go for it. And in the end, he gets the drop. And he becomes joint top scorer for the Moroccans at six points. Italians have a bit of time here. Six left. Giretti finding Bedzetti on the basket quick. Oh my goodness! Trademark Sabri Bedzetti. And what a way to finish the first half as the Italians lead this one 41 to 14 against Morocco. Bedzetti currently now second top scorer just behind Giulio Papi and Filippo Carasino, who together combine for 20 points. As now Carlo Di Giusto breaks into a smile. As we now have a halftime break. Basketball fans, we thank you for joining us. It's only halftime. We're going to take a quick short break. So go get a drink. Go get something to eat. But don't go anywhere too long as we will be back for the second half. This is the 2024 IWBF Rapid Charge. Hashtag last chance for Paris. <laughs>
Well, welcome back, wheelchair basketball fans. We're live here in our team France for the 2024 Rapid Charge Wheelchair Basketball Tournament. The final chance for the Paris 2024 Paralympics. At the moment, it is the Italians versus the Moroccans, and currently, the Italians lead this one 41 to 14. Well, hello and welcome back to all of our fans watching live here on the IWBF YouTube channel. Please let us know where you're watching, which team you're supporting, so we can give you a shout out. Well, of course, these two teams have qualified for the Rapid Charge Tournament due to the continental competitions of the Para European and African Championships. The Moroccans winning the African Para Championships, defeating Algeria in the final. While well, the Italians, on the other hand, while well, it was a very tough tournament as they finished fifth, right behind Germany, the Netherlands, Spain, and Great Britain. Great Britain and Spain automatically qualifying for the Paris 2024 Paralympics. Of course, these teams will compete over five days. In the final day, you'll have four champions that will be booking their tickets for Paris. Well, we already have four teams who have automatically qualified for the Paralympics. In the case of the Europeans, we mentioned Great Britain along with Spain. They booked their tickets. While in the American Parapan Championships, it was indeed the United States of America who took the gold medal in Santiago. While Australia, they have become the representatives as they won in Bangkok, Thailand on the 12th to 20th of January, only a few months ago. But now four more teams will be joining them through this Rapid Charge Championship. Well, statistically in this game so far, only two players on the score sheet for the Moroccans, Walidi and Shalat, their captain. Both players combined total at the moment. Well, the Italians have five players of both Andrea, oh, excuse me, Filippo Carasino and Giulio Papi leading the way with a combined total of 20 points. 10 apiece. Welcome back as we get this one back underway. Morocco trying to get into an organized half court set. Falampi at top of the key. Now they've been trying to get the ball to him inside the paint. But the Italians do have a defensive game plan. There it is, the same situation. The defense proven to be too imperious here from the Italians. Dimitri Tange currently in the lineup along with Fabio Raimondi. Also checking in for the Azzurri, Gabriel Benvenuto. Raimondi going for 15. The rebound has been secured by Morocco. Well, Shalat has been their best player so far. Again, finding Falab. Foul has been committed. Well, that's an effective game plan that Morocco's had, and when they're able to get the ball to the big man inside, it's just a matter of trying to convert those buckets. He is scoreless so far in this game. Shalat here on the baseline. Tries to go for the spectacular, but he's unable to convert. The Italians so far have been terrific in this game. The transition play has been effective. And another foul's been called against Morocco. Well, a big shout out to Zaheli. Shalembe and of course Cora Express Live just joining us here on the live YouTube chat. It's another change coming in for the Italians. Caludio Spano also coming in for the first time tonight. Twenty-seven point lead to the Azzurri. Spano thinks about it, finds Tange, the only player to make a three-pointer. And mid-range, simply Signore Automatico. Well, he doesn't get enough credit. We did see this in the IWBF World Championship in Dubai. He's more than just a utility glue player for the Italians. What's well, the right idea? It was a good reversal, but the pass just wasn't enough. Mohamed Wulidi was wide open. And had the pass just been a little bit better, Wulidi would have had a very wide open look, a high percentage look. And that's the key for Morocco, creating high percentage chances from the field. 
Shalat trying to put on a bit of full court pressure. Tange coming off one ball screen. Well, he's made a few shots tonight. Why not go for another one? Go for the mid range and six it. Well, first points for Enrico Gione. Oh, Gione getting his first two points. Now it's a 31 point lead to Italy. That's well, a good offense by Morocco, but it's the same story. The end product just not there. Gianni go down the middle. Finds a bit of space, but again, good defense by Morocco. Another foul's been committed by the Italians. Well, we currently have 214 people watching this live YouTube stream. This is the IWBF Repercharge. And again, if you could please, for the promotion and development of Wheelchair Basel, please like this live stream, subscribe to the IWBF on YouTube, and follow us on all social media platforms of Twitter, or X, excuse me, X, Instagram, and Facebook. Well, you gotta give credit to Morocco. Offensively, they're looking very organized, but the end product, as we mentioned, just the inability to convert these good looks. And here's the problem they've had, is to trying to prevent the Italian transition. Raimondi put under heavy pressure. And this is good now for Morocco, getting a still, but can they get numbers ahead? Well, that's gonna be the third team foul against Italy here. We've only played three minutes so far in the third quarter. And Carlo De Giusto, he's gonna call timeout because Many of the second lineup players are in the game at the moment. Carlo De Giusto calling this timeout at the moment because probably what he wants to see is a little bit more organization in their offense, better spacing. It's all a bit too congested at the moment. No Sabri Benzetti along with Filippo Carasino. And what he's doing effectively, trying to get other players a little bit more playing time here. While of course head coach of Morocco, Uches Rafael, understands his team they're doing everything they can right now trying to orchestrate an offense where they're getting good shots but it's all about making those shots at the moment that's the one way you build confidence defensively they've been very organized very much better here in the second half the wheelchair hoops it's all about runs trying to build on every single play whether it's on the defensive end or whether it's on the offense Sideline ball now to Morocco. Shellac getting this one inbound. Patient passing from the Moroccans. The time is winding down. Shellac's got to get something going. Going down low now inside the paint. A foul has been committed. <laughs> So baseline, well, no, two free throws coming up. So this will indeed be the first time Morocco go to the charity stripe. Well, currently the free throw line here for the Moroccans is number 13, Rita Mautui. It's Morocco look for their first points here in the second half. Mr. Both, it's going to go out of bounds. The Italians will get the ball back. Six forty-two to go here in the third quarter. Now the Italians patiently build up their offense. Tange thinks about it. 
Now they go for another three-point. They made one tonight and making another one. Well, from downtown, beautifully tucked away by Fabio Raimondi. Well, the Italians not traditionally known for taking a lot of three-pointers. But when you're left with that much time and space, why not? Great play by Shalat in and around the defense. Too strong off the backboard. And now the Italians will have a wide open layup. Raimondi potentially is going to go on a 5-0 run. But playing very unselfishly. Rattles his way in and out. Tangay with a rebound. 34 point lead at the moment here for the Azuri. Tangay left wide open. He's been on fire and he remains cooking. Well, he is putting on an entree right now from the mid range. Give this man some credit. Sending a message early on as Morocco throw it away. Wallini was trying to find Shalat. Shalat didn't quite know how wide open he was there on the mid range. Well, double change coming in for the Moroccans. Number 12. Mohamed Bargo will be coming into the game along with number nine, Fouad El Moussati. So Alini's going to come out now. Morocco do have six players on the floor. As Falap is going to take a breather. But one thing that is undeniable, Morocco have done everything so far. Again, you got to give this team a lot of credit. The champions of the African Power Championship. Right now, they're up against one of the best teams in the world. Remember the Italians finishing very strong at the IWBF World Championship, defeating Canada in the last game in Dubai. Canadians also here at the Repechage, and they will be playing later today. 5.21 to go, 10 left on the shot clock for the Azuri. Well, he's made one three, goes for another one. This guy is cooking at the moment. Second tray ball. Well, why not in doubt? Go to the three-point line and go to Signore Fabio Raimundo. Well, Bago tries a three. He's unable to get it. Three threes so far in the game for the Italians. Now they're on the counterattack. We're under five minutes here in the third quarter. Tange thinks about it. He's going to go pick and roll. Time winded down here on the shot clock. Raimundo, he wants the ball for the three-pointer. Tange goes for 15. Doesn't get the magic drop. The Moroccans come up with a rebound. Shalat with space. Goes inside the key. They probably could have taken that one, but he's going to go inside the paint. The game plan's very simple here for Morocco. They want to go in and around the basket, but it's not been effective so far. Patient build up here from the Italians. Looking to extend this to a 40 plus point lead at the moment. Tange now gets rejected, good defense. Rita Matui making that extra effort to prevent this lead from getting any bigger. Now the Moroccans are two on one. Matui fakes the pass. Great recovery by the Italians on defense, preventing a Moroccan fast break bucket. Bago for 15, front eye, can't connect. Rebound has been secured by Gabriel Benevenuto. Good passing here from the Italians. Raimundo finding Tange. Finds Benvenuto in the lane, sharing is carrying, and you are witnessing the true definition of team wheelchair basketball by the Italian national team. Well, Shellac goes for the why not? He could be an X Factor offensively for the Moroccans. Well, he's a team player. He wants to get everybody involved, but at the moment, he's got to take over because he is now the top scorer for Morocco with nine points. Gia goes for the fadeaway off balance, and that's as tough as it looks. Well, he's been terrific since coming in here. Enrico Gione cutting it down to a 40 point deficit. Bago Vanchelani made his last one. Well, he makes another one. 
confidence is contagious. Now it's your time. You have to show the world that you need to lead this team. And he is a terrific player. Maybe he's been a little too unselfish so far, but Morocco, they need confidence. They need somebody to lead them. And at the moment, their captain, Zouer Shalat, might be that player. Well, that's good defense by Morocco. Two minutes left, 12 left on the shot clock. The Italians will get it back deep on the sideline. Almost expiring. Tange's made one three, goes to the other one again. <laughs> Bravissimo. Second three pointer coming from Dimitri Tange. Four three pointers so far for the Azuri in this game. They lead this one 60 to 19. We're under two minutes left. Well, wait till these defense just prevailing at the moment, making life a little bit challenging here for the Moroccans. Thank you very much. Just over 90 seconds left here in the third quarter. We've had three three-pointers here in the third quarter by the Italians. Gianni inside the paints. Offensive rebound. Benvenuto follows up and two more points coming for the Azzurri. That's the case there. The shot went up and Morocco got caught ball watching. You have to put a body on one of those players to prevent the offensive rebounds. But, you know, the Italians, they know how to convert second chance points. Shalat finding Bargo. Yeah, they knew where the ball was going, but they do have time left. El Musati. They got to shoot this one. Bargo, no look. Well, he went for the spectacular. And it goes out of bounds. Again? Thank you. Well, polite words from our wonderful official from Brazil, Gustavo. Of course, thank you in his native language of Portuguese is obrigado. Well, Morocco don't want to let these two get any more three-point shots as Benvenuto is able to finish this one inside the paints. Well, that's just the Italians' ability to read the defense. They knew the pressure was coming on the perimeter, and in the end, they found a wide open. Gabriel Benvenuto inside the key. Foul's going to be committed by Claudio Spano. It's his first personal foul of the game. Seven Italian players currently on the score sheet. Oh no, my apologies. Ten players actually. My correction. Shalat is leading the way for Morocco. He has 11 points. Wallini has six. And the only other player to score so far for Morocco is indeed Falamp. Well, currently the free throw line again for Morocco. Rida Maatui. Well, does he get the drop on it again? The unfriendly luck of these rims in the Azur Arena. Final possession, the third quarter. The Italians can try to dribble this down for the final shot. Tange twisting, spinning. Fine, Benvenuti gets fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line. That's well, a nice pick and roll scenario set there for the Italians. Gabriel Benvenuti set the ball screen. Tange went off with a little bit of a twist and turn. And again, they went to the roll. Morocco's defense just being exploited. And that's the difference of the level you're playing at here at the IWBF Rapid Charge. The final last chance for Paris at this tournament. Remember, four teams will be joining the United States of America, Great Britain, Spain, and of course, Australia, all four teams qualifying for the Paris 2024 Paralympics via the Continental Para Championships. Benvenuto has had some good moments here in the third quarter. Morocco now final seconds. They have to push this one. Shalat's going to go for the three-pointer. Gives this one up. And they don't get it off in time in wheelchair basketball fans. End of the third quarter. It is indeed the Italians who lead this one 65 to 19 against Morocco. We have one final quarter, but we will be back in just under two minutes.
This is the IWBF Repechage Tournament. We're live here in the beautiful city of Antibes, France, on the southern coast of the Mediterranean. Wheelchair Basel fans, and again, we have currently 256 live viewers on the live YouTube chat. Please, if you can, to help develop and progress the sport of wheelchair basketball, like this live stream, and also subscribe to the IWBF on YouTube and follow us on all social media platforms of X, Instagram, and Facebook to get the best live updates and content of wheelchair basketball. Well, a big shout out to our live viewers. Again, let us know which team you're supporting and where you're currently watching. We'd like to give a shout out to Cora Express Live, Zahele Shalem, Dylan Cummings, Patrick Sutels, and GC Panyana, currently watching from South Africa. And a big shout out to my good friend and colleague, Jerry Smith, a legend in wheelchair basketball, who's currently watching this game. Fourth quarter will commence. The Italians will get the first possession. As Andrea Giretti checking back in along with Filippo Carasino and Joel Bo Boganelli as well. Carasino go from 18. He six out one, nothing but net. And now it's all going through the motions for the Azzurri. Well, very similar to the opening game of the IWBF World Championship in Dubai, the Italians did play against the hosts, the United Arab Emirates. And again, they put on a very effective display of just why they are one of the best wheelchair basketball countries in the world. Shalat penetrates, that's a good move, but just too strong off the backboard. Oh, good defense by the Moroccan. Shalat comes up with a steal. Now, can they convert this one? Matui inside the paint, getting his first field goal. And it's got to be possession by possession. Winning little victories within this final 10 minutes for the Moroccans. It's all a learning experience, but they've got to learn and grow collectively together. Well, Boganelli left wide open. Goes off the backboard, and again, the defense was nowhere to be seen inside the key. Joel Boganelli getting his first field goal. And now becoming the 11th Italian player to get on the score sheet tonight. Well, nice pass by Shalat, finding Bago. Well, he went again for the acrobatic. As now Filippo Carasino is going to finish this one. Carasino took his time, and again he misses. Giretti gets a follow-up. And now it's a 50-point deficit as they lead this 71 to 21. Well, good hands by Giretti. That's going to remain Morocco ball on the sideline. Well, if you are just joining this tournament live at the moment, we've got some very exciting games coming up today. Of course, after this one, it will be the mighty Germany taking on Colombia. And of course, at 3.30 p.m. local time will be a very exciting matchup as Canada will be taking on the Netherlands. Well, later this evening, the host team, France, they'll be hosting the Iranian national team. Iran, of course, bronze medalist at the IWBF World Championship in Dubai. It's Karasino inside the keys, unable to convert. 
Now two, he draws a foul against Carasino. And that's going to be the first team foul for either of these two teams here in the fourth and final quarter. Pago goes for 15, beautifully tucks that one away. And again, little victories is what Morocco need here in the fourth quarter, building confidence. And he's got to be able to convert that more often. He's got to have the confidence. Many times you see Moroccan players, they've had good looks, but they just haven't shot the ball. As Gioni inside the key responds effectively for the Italians. Shalat trying to push the tempo quickly for Morocco, trying to respond. But an offensive foul can be called. Mauatui only had two wheels off the floor, and that's the correct call by the official. Change coming in for Morocco, returning to the game. Isa Falem, who's been well, one of their more effective players, but he has found it very tough inside the key so far due to the presence of the suffocated defense by the Italians. Fifty point lead currently to the Azuri. Giretti going for the cross court, finds Carasino. He'll try for 18, high arc, but he's unable to knock this one down. Here's where the Moroccans need to try and build some experience now. Build their assertive nature in the offensive transition. Nice pass, finds for Lamp. He's got to make this one. And he's able to connect. And that's a good offense by Morocco. Again, the game plan has been trying to find Isa Falap inside the key. And he has to learn how to adjust to these rims. We're going to have a timeout now. Carlo De Giusto wants to talk it over with his players. They lead this one 73 to 25. 6 10 left here in the fourth quarter. Well, again, Basel fans, we thank you, everybody, for joining us on this live IWBF YouTube stream. Currently, the Italians lead 73-25 to against Morocco. We'd like to give some more shout-outs to all of our live YouTube viewers. So shout-out to GC Pagnana, currently watching from South Africa. Again, I do apologize. Some of the names here. GBT Mongoose 97. Welcome as well. And Angel. As well as welcome to Klaus Pulgaren. And again, we do thank you, everybody, who has tuned in live to watch this game. And remember, every like and every subscribe that you give to the IWBF, it just helps progress the development of wheelchair basketball. So please like and support and follow the IWBF on all social media platforms of X, Instagram, and Facebook. Carasino going baseline. Good defense by Morocco. Gianetti kicks out. Now they go for the fifth three, and it's the fifth three-pointer of the game now for the Azuri. Well, beautifully tucked away by Claudio Spanu. Well, Morocco did everything they could on defense to prevent the Italians from getting a wide-open look inside the key. But now the perimeter threat is becoming an issue here. The Italians are finding their confidence from the three-point line. Foul is going to be committed by Shalat. Well, again, kind words and thank you to Angel, but I want to say you fans, you make wheelchair basketball as great as it is. Again, we've got many young fans coming into the Azure Arena, enjoying the occasion, and what an occasion has been. As Carasino had a good look there, but he was unable to convert. Well, 
Well, surprised horse on YouTube said, let's go Italy. Well, they sometimes they like to say, andiamo or forza Italia. Falap inside the key. Good defense by Gione. And again, terrific play there by Isa Falap. He now moves up to six points. Well, good progression from Morocco so far here in the second half. Now they have five players on the score sheet. And as I said for them, for the final four minutes and 40 seconds, it's all about pride. Oh, my goodness! Rated three-pointers. And again, it's that man, Claudio Spano. Well, the Italians are setting him the tempo and sending a message to the other teams in this tournament. As Shellac goes, and now we have a cookout of both teams exchanging three-point field goals. And that's the second one for Shellac tonight. Captain Fantastic, who led this Moroccan team to the African Power Championship. Well, he's got 14 points tonight, making a great name for himself here at this level. Well, Carasino trying to go for 15. Front eye, and as Isa Falap comes up with a rebound. Well, Falap went up his options. Shalat here on the perimeter. Heavy defense coming by Giretti. Six on the shot clock. Morocco's got to get something. Mid range is up, unable. Falap, an offensive rebound. The putback is good. Well, he's almost near double figures. He has eight points this evening. 3.30 left here in the fourth quarter. And now we're seeing much more determined nature by the Moroccans going in for offensive rebounds. And again, it's building that confidence, building that identity on their offense. But now defensively, they allow Gioni inside the key. Shalat's going for his third three, and again, this man, give him some credit. He is on fire at the moment. Third treble of the game for Captain Fantastic, Zouir Shalat. Well, this is your moment. 17 points tonight for Shalat. Giretti from 15, fadeaway, gets the M1. Well, as they say in Italia, uno, due, tre, molto grazie. Well, Andrea Giretti is the one of the key veteran players for this Italian national team. And he was one of their stars back in the 2018 IWBF World Championship in Hamburg. But he can still score. He can still be a factor. Giaretti unable to convert the three-point play. Just over two and a half here in the fourth quarter. Italia currently leading against Moroccans. Well, Shalat had the three-point. A nice pass, finding Mautui, and he gets it. Well, this is positive play from the Moroccans. They're playing much better. Mautui getting his second field goal tonight. Carasino inside the key, but defensively, it's a little too easy for the Italians. And that's going to be one error development. Now, you can put that down to fatigue, both mentally and physically for Morocco. But you know, they've come here. They've shown promise in science. Shall not go to the flap. Can he go to double figures? Now he has 10 points. Much better play. Well, he only had two in the first half. He's got eight here in the second. One thing you've got to give Morocco a lot of credit. They play with a lot of pride here in the fourth quarter. Giretti going for another three-pointer. Flap unable to secure the rebound. 137 left. It's going to be the Italians ball with a fresh 14 on the shot clock. Marasino receiving the ball off a curl screen. Finds Giretti. He'll try from the mid-range. Front eye, no good. Mawatui with a rebound. Final 83 seconds left during the fourth quarter. Well, Shalat's wide open. Why not go for it? You've made three threes. When well, it goes to the long two, it's up. 
Well, he did hesitate there, and you would have thought, having made three three-pointers, why not go for it now? Gianni going for the fadeaway. Well, the Italians, with a minute to go, can look forward to picking up their first victory here at the Rapid Charge. Svalamp looking for 12 points, and again, it rolls its way out. And it's the unlucky friendly roll. These rims are at the Azure Arena. Italian counterattack. Giretti goes in. He finishes this one with 41.9 left. Well, it's been a terrific display by the Italians. Well, a lot of positives here for Morocco in the fourth quarter. A lot of areas to develop as Shellac goes in. He gets 90 points. Well, he now officially becomes the leading scorer in this game, and he's been terrific. Remember the name, Zuir Shalat. Well, some exciting games will be taking place later today. After this one, it will be the Colombians who will be taking on Germany. Well, later on, you'll be having the big showdown between the Canadians and the Netherlands. Nice job by Gione getting the final bucket. Well, Shalat is going to show incredible sportsmanship. Well, he's going to go for the deep one. Almost got it. Well, wheelchair Basel fans, we thank you for joining us. The Italians win this 89 to 41 against Morocco. The champions of the African Power Championship getting a good taste of how competitive the level here is at the IWBF. Well, again, great camaraderie between players of both teams. You can see there, Gianni just shaking hands with Mao Tui, and that's oh, a great experience for Morocco. And there's a lot to learn, a lot to build on. There's potential with this team. And we've seen that with their fantastic captain, Zouir Shalat, who was a top scorer tonight with 19 points. Of the Italians, they were indeed led by Filippo Carasino. He did have 14 points. Giulio Papi finished with 10. Gianni also finished with 10, only coming in the second half. And of course, one of the best players in world wheelchair basketball, Sabri Bezzetti, didn't feature in the second half. He finished with nine. But collectively, it was a great performance, both defensively and on the offense by the Italians. And the Azuri take first victory here at the IWBF Repercharge. We'd like to give a big thank you for everybody who tuned in to watch this game between the Italians and Morocco. Great performance from the Italians, a lot of inspiring plays from Morocco. But the Azzurri, i fratelli di Italia, abbiamo vinto, that's what they're saying. So much inspiration, so much like here. Here are some of the key replays. From this game, Mawatui finding Shalat. He got the first bucket for Morocco in the first quarter. Well, Wellini also had a very good game as well. He had six points. He was also at one point the second top scorer in this game, but that did fall to Isa Felap. Another wonderful penetration here by Zouir Shalat. Well, that was the first three-pointer of the game coming from Dimitri Tange. He did have two three-pointers in the game. Oh, beautiful pump fake. And again, nicely tucked away. And well, that was Francesco Santarelli. And well, that was the second field goal coming from Wulini. Well, you got to think right now, what are the areas of development in order for Morocco to progress at this level? I mean, they do have some good individual talent. Maybe the depth, we could argue, doesn't compare to what the Italians have. But we saw in the first half the Moroccans relentlessly trying to go inside the paint to find Isa Falan. But here's one player who maybe at times a little too unselfish. Zouir Shalad for me was terrific. 19 points, top score in the game. Of course, in the third quarter, the Italians tried to put in the second unit of the players. And, you know, a very effective second half coming from Gabriel Benvenuto. But here was the sublime three point shooting from Claudio Spano from downtown. Well, he found his confidence, and a you know, big credit to this man, Isil Felam. It didn't work out too well in the first half, but he did finish in the end with 10 points for 
Morocco. Shalad again exemplifying his distance, his range, his confidence, but he's got to be a focal point in Morocco's offense. Better play Andrea Giretzi, one of the key players in the 2018 IWBF World Championship in Hamburg. And it's all over. The Italians take the first victory, 89 to 41 against Morocco. More games to come later today. Some exciting games for that matter. Well, next game will be going on at 1.15. Colombia will be taking on Germany, but also the big one coming, Canada versus the Netherlands. And later this evening, the host France, they will be hosting Iran. Well, there's your final score. Again, thank you for joining us on the IWBF live YouTube channel. More games to come today. We'll see you soon. But for now, au revoir and merci. Ensemble, faisons briller les Jeux de Paris 2024.